And Mike King joins me now live in our Auckland studio. Mike, how worried are you for these kids? Oh, uh, look, you know, when we first started this out, we wanted to be part of the solution rather than be part of the problem. So many people are out there pointing out the problems. So we decided we were going to do something about it, and we wanted to raise $2 million in our first year to see what uh, what we could do. The funded agency straight away came out and called us irresponsible. Uh, they said we're raising people's expectations, there wouldn't be enough counsellors, um, and uh, we're creating more problems. So what we did discover was... Guess what? There are enough counsellors out there. The average wait was about a week. So, so under your scheme? Under average... our scheme, the average time was a, about a week. The average cost... So there were counsellors there. The counsellors were allowed to charge us what they what they would normally charge. So some of them were pretty close to $300. Other, others were around 80 So the average cost came out at about $120 per visit. Uh, four visits um, per 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 client was the average. So with the government one, when you give someone six sessions, you know, there's a whole lot of panic around six. So what we said was have as many sessions as you want. And the average turned out to be four. Uh, the, the people with the highest uptake were eight to 11 year olds. Um, you know, we had uh, in the last month, uh, over 900 in the, in the last month. Um, that were taking up the service. Over 900 people over in nine, the last month. Yeah, no, over 900 8 to 11 year olds. You know, so uh, 8 to 11, uh, which is. And was that the biggest group that was taking yes. up these counselling services? Yes. 8 to 11. 8 to 11, 11 year olds. Now, now if, if you talk to anyone who's an expert, they'll go, wow, that's a problem. I don't see it as a problem. Remember, none of these people were referred. This is a voluntary system. So, what is it about 8 to 11 year olds? And we, we had uh, nearly 500 uh, under 8 year olds in the last month. What is it about this age group that feels that it's okay to go and ask for help? You see, and this is what we need to investigate. So that's great that you had all those people come forward for counselling, but what happens now to the ones who are partway through? There's no money in the pot. Well, there is money in the pot. So the way the way it's set up is each counsellor was allocated five sessions per client. Some of those sessions won't be used or haven't been used, so that money's going back into the pot. Is it a perfect system? Absolutely not. How we did it all manually. How much do you reckon will come back into the pot? I, I'm, you know, I'm hoping... At least three, three hundred thousand. And how much did you start off with? We started with one point three million. Are you taken by surprise about the level of demand? No, we've been we've been funding free counselling for a number number of years on the quiet, the Kilo Charitable Trust. People would come to us saying we we need help, and we would just we would just fund it. So no. There has always been a need. Um, what I think is we're targeting the wrong areas. We are targeting crisis rather than prevention, which is um, which is uh, getting into schools and getting our young kids talking about little problems before they become big problems, before they become suicidal thoughts. Realistically, with the level of demand that you're seeing, even yep. if you do get 300 grand in there, it's yep. not going to be enough. No, no, it? absolutely so, not. So, so remember, when we first started, the first four months, is average averaged about 120000 The last month, which really rocked us, $920,000 went out in the last month. And what we've heard on the, on the, on the grapevine was that doctors were finding a better response a faster response in our service and they were they were um, directing people to our fund now we were meant to be we were meant to be a fund that gave the the system a break so most people took 14 weeks to get in so what we were going what we were hoping to do was fund a couple of sessions before you get into funded services but when health professionals ignore the funded service because our service is better that's telling you a lot about the current system. So, as you say, you were supposed to be a, a backstop, a break, but yeah. do you think you're actually taking on the primary provider's role here? Well, I think I, I think there is room for someone to take on the primary uh, provider's role. Um, it, but you don't have the funds for that, so what happens now? Are you looking to the Ministry of Health? Are you telling them, look, here's the statistics absolutely. we've yeah. so, got? So, so I've, had, um, I've had meetings with the Minister. I've showed him the figures. I had a meeting with him six weeks ago. Uh, I got a very positive response. Uh, Any commitment to 
to give you more cash, Look, though. governments don't commit, you know that. Um, they can't commit, but um, I'm going to keep hassling them because that's what I do. Do they need to? Is it their responsibility to put money into this, into this particular service? Um, you know, I think there is a need for this particular service. It's up for the government to say whether it's worthy or not. We know it's worthy. We've seen the numbers. Um, for example, um, for funded services, the uptake, uh, the, the gender uptake is 80% female, 20% male. We got 55% female, 45% male, 45%. And make no mistake, Maori youth are not the highest um, group taking their own lives. It's males. 73% of those who take their own lives are males. And we got a 45% uptake. Why do you think that is? Well, I, re- think, I think this younger generation coming up uh, are, are, are more empathetic, more caring. They're not like our generation. My generation is very selfish, very selfish. And I'll give you a classic example. When a kid comes home and talks about the anxiety they had today, most parents go, oh, what the hell's the matter with you? Gee, we didn't have it. Just forget about this. Here's what you need to do. So our kids are not hearing our parents saying, look, you know, you just need some more resilience. What they're hearing is, you're someone else I can't talk to, so they need other options. And what okay. we're doing is providing that option. So you provided one, and now the money has run out. Did you anticipate that? Did you give councillors yes. a heads ab- up? Did ab- you give ab- the councillors a heads up? Absolutely, we gave them the heads up. Yes, we did. We gave everyone the heads up. Everyone knew. That the pot was running low. Yes, the pot was, run- was on the website every day. So you know, but that last that last month, to be fair, took everyone by surprise. You know, we're travelling along at 120, and then suddenly 900,000 worth of sessions are, are, are asked for. So what should they do with those clients who are maybe partway through vital counselling services and they're worried about them? Take care of them. Take care of them. If, if someone... For free, you're saying... Yeah. Yeah. Take care of them. Uh, you know, it's it's only for a short time. We'll come up with a better system. We'll get more money. But, you know, it, it galls me that people are going, what about these people? Use your common sense. If you need to, if someone, if you're worried about someone's life and you're not going to see them because you're not going to get paid, I, you know, I don't think the fund's the problem. When are you going to get more money? The next Gumboot Day is April, April the 3rd. isn't it? So April do you 3rd. anticipate getting a chunk of money before then or are you going to have to wait that we, what, we have months. to wait. We have to wait. I mean, you know. But you know some people can't wait. You know that yourself. Some people can't wait for money for counselling. Uh, well, they've been waiting for 10 years under the previous government, you know. Um, Are you we- not expecting the government, this government, to get back to you before that gumboot day in April? I'm not. Uh, well, what I am going to say is. Um, I'm going to keep on to the government. I am going to keep on to them. But, you know, honestly, government, governments don't run, don't, don't make decisions. The Ministry of Health makes these decisions. The Ministry of Health are the ones, you know, so governments come and go. So relationship with gov- them? Well, it's terrible. Um, we, Elaborate. We, yeah, what do you mean? Well... We've been trying to collaborate for years with, with these organisations. Academics, clinicians, Ministry of Health, they're all working seamlessly together with their evaluated and evidence-based um, rubbish that doesn't work. Um, and we've been saying, look, the people have a voice. So we asked we asked New Zealand to send in, we needed a thousand letters that are left by people who have taken their own lives and stories from people who have attempted to take their own lives to find commonality and themes. Mm-hmm. So we put this out straight away we got a letter from all the funded organizations out there demanding we stop that we're terrorizing people that people uh, are suicidal because we're getting people's letters so then the ministry of health turned around and they gave us a cease and desist order a cease and desist order that we stop collecting this data so we- mike pause for a second a legal letter telling you Stop that. Stop. No, I don't know if it's legal, but it was a letter from the, the minister, from the Ministry of Health and a letter from the Privacy Commissioner saying, I've got no legal right to, but I want you to cease and desist. And, and, Are you stopping that? Hell no. How no, this isn't North Korea. This isn't, you know, they are Donald Trump. They can't tell people what to do. People voluntarily put these letters and gave them to us, hoping that we could come up with some themes and some commonalities to to 
Armed people with tools to understand why someone wishes to take their own life. Because right now, the overwhelming majority of people think that people want to take their lives because they're selfish, they're cowards, and, and, and they don't care. Are you sure? Are you sure that they're not right about potentially putting people at risk by collecting those letters? Are you confident that they're not right about Look, that? I'm confident that some people will walk down the street and a dog will look at them funny and they'll think that that's a problem for their suicidal ideation. Look, life is full of problems. Every year the government puts out the stats and in those stats they list how people take their lives by gunshot, by, by hanging. It's all there in the details. Why I'm certainly triggered by that and I'm not suicidal. So stop pointing your finger. Stop pointing your finger and get on board. This is common themes. This is information. And I can tell you this. I've read probably more suicide notes than anyone except a coroner. And there are three common themes that come through. One, I'm hurting and I want the pain to stop. Most people are suicidal, are either in psychological or physical pain and they want it to stop. Two, I'm causing hurt. This is by far the biggest the, the biggest one. Uh, uh, I'm causing hurt. I feel like I'm a burden to everyone and everyone would be better off without me. And the third theme that comes through, mainly in younger people with relationship breakups, older people with relationship breakups, breakups I want to hurt you. You hurt me, now I want to hurt you. So what I'm seeing in, in the letters that I'm reading and what the themes that we want to look at and arm New Zealand with this information is really basic stuff. At the heart of all suicidal thinking, from what I've been reading and what I'm seeing and my own personal experiences, at the heart of all suicide are just people who are hurting. They're not cowards. They're not attention seekers. They're not drama queens. They are people who are hurting. Mm. And we as a nation need to do a better job. Here's, here, here's Mike, a, we're almost out of time. Can I ask you just very quickly, how many letters have you had so far? How many oh, people? I, like, I don't know. Well over... We have more letters than we have complaints. Okay. We have more letters than we have complaints, and, and there is no way we are stopping. We are going to get this information out. There is going to be no personal information in there. There is going to be no means. It's just themes. Okay, appreciate you joining me. That is Mike King, who is a mental health campaigner. 